Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the online service today. This is round two for our online service during COVID times. The reason why we're doing this for today is because we are trying to understand what red means for us and how we ensure that everyone is safe and that we abide by the regulations of the government. Hopefully this online services wouldn't last long and we are back to meet face to face again. Today we have a good line of things that are happening. The worship team is there always for us and we would be listening to an online speaker which hopefully can bless our hearts. Before I start a prayer, I'd like to encourage you on the message on Philippians 4, 8, which said, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on this things. Yes, during COVID times, we could choose to be kind, to be thoughtful, and to just continue to love and serve others for God's glory. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, because we could gather together here virtually. Thank you, Lord, because we could claim your promise that where two or three are gathered together, you are in our midst. I pray, Lord, that you bless the service today. You bless each one. Stir our hearts, Lord. Revive our hearts and our minds and help us to continue to abide in you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. stood before creation eternity in your hand you spoke the earth into motion my soul now to stand you stood
your shoulder, my soul now to stand. So what can I say?
Kia ora whanau. so good to be with you today. I'm Tim. And I'm Grace. And Grace is helping me today. We are going to make bagels. So, um, welcome to our kitchen, welcome to our home. And as we do so, we're going to share a little bit from Acts chapter 2. Another thing to look out for around the room is, what are we looking out for? Minifigures. Uh, okay, Lego minifigures, which might change and move between scenes. So, let's go. We've made some dough already, and we're going to get started. So, um, as we find these things that we need, and as we prepare to start um, rolling stuff out, this is a, a bread dough that we've been uh, cooking in the bread maker. It's the same dough that we use for a lot of different things. And um, as we do, we've, we've been talking about Acts chapter 2. And we've, we see this kind of picture of the church. We've been talking about this for about a month. And in the, this picture of the church, we see these basic components. We see prayer. I, I, you might have memorized all these by now. We see prayer. We see biblical teaching. We see fellowship and communion. We see worship. Um, we see evangelism. We see signs and wonders. All of these different components of what it means to be church. And it's, and it's a beautiful picture of, of the church at that time. So we're, we're encouraged by these, these scriptures. As we think about this, we've, we've touched on a few weeks ago, this idea that these details, they're not prescriptive of describing exactly how things should look. They're more descriptive, describing the church and how it was in that moment. But the thing is that over the last two millennia, 2,000 years, uh, the way that that has taken shape has looked very different in different settings uh, in order to fulfill God's mission in the places that God has placed his people. So we're not looking for a, a formula, a particular exact way or method of being church. What we find out is when those basic ingredients are there, it doesn't really matter what shape it takes. It can still be authentically church in different ways and in different forms. So to kind of illustrate that today, um, we have this bread dough here. We, we use this bread dough for a lot of different things. It's exactly the same recipe that we use to make a loaf of bread. It's the same recipe that we use to make those cinnamon scrolls that we saw. Same, same recipe today, we're gonna to make bagels. At other times, we use the same recipe to make um, pizza pizza bases. I've even used exactly the same recipe to make donuts, deep fried in, in oil and then with, with sugar on later on. And so the same recipe, the same ingredients produces this, this, um, this dough. And then that dough we use to shape in different ways according to what the need is. And with donuts, it may not be a need, but you know, there, there we go. So today we're going to do um, a different approach. We're doing bagels. And so this is part one of our video. As we do this though, I'd love us to have a think about the different components of church. When you think of church, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Is church primarily about the building or is it primarily about the people? Is the church primarily about God's mission. And we'll find that for the early church, that as they developed, as, as they moved through the book of Acts, that there was a, a time of change. We're in that time of change right now. As, as a pastor over the years, whoops, that one was a little bit wobbly. Um, over the years as, as a pastor, and we look back at, at church history, uh, the way that the Church of New Zealand is right now is very different from 100 years ago. So as pastors, you have this very real sense that the shape of the church in 50 years' time is going to look different again. And so we need to be working in a way that is honouring the current season and also preparing for the change for the future that, that happens. Some of that is societal change. Some of it relates to the move of the Holy Spirit and the work that God is doing. So we need to constantly be in this place of openness. 
the, the challenge is when we get too comfortable in the, the method and the style that we like the best. We want sliced white bread every day, and it turns out that there were lo lots of other ways that we could have bread that might be more suitable in different settings, in different ways, and that God might be actually moving us into a different form, a different way of being church. So when we look at these, would you like to have a go at that? When we look at these different forms and these different ways of being church, the important thing is that those core components are there. The shape of it comes secondary. Now what this means for us as a church is during this significant time of turbulence and change, we may not be able to go back to things in the way that they were. We may not want to either because it might be a season that God is inviting us into a new space, a new form, a new shape, and all of the ingredients are still there. But what we might find is that, oh, that was exciting. I'll show you how I do it. I do this one quite hard to make sure you look down here and check that it's all come away from the sides. Then you get this one and do the same thing, wobble it around a bit. Oops, mine's a bit skew with as well. Actually, we've run out. I'm going to have to roll, out, roll it out again. Excuse me while we roll this out again, interrupt the message. Um, this is the moment that we probably need a bit of a commercial break. What I'd like to say about those different ingredients, those different components of the church, as well as the church being shaped differently for different settings, there is this reality that the same ingredients that create the church are the same ingredients that fulfill the Great Commission. If we were to go back to those core components of church in the book of Acts and we were to follow those and look for those, we might find that the church is automatically more effective in our mission to the world around us. Is it possible that we have become too comfortable in the way of being church that suits us? You know, we can't even rearrange the seats in our church at Franklin Baptist without someone complaining. How much more is there a need for us to actually shift right off our seats and go out into the community? You see, when we see those different components of the church in the book of Acts, I, I, I sometimes wonder if we have overemphasized Sunday morning gatherings in a building so much so that we've lost our sense of the calling to the Great Commission. That one looks great. Just plonk it on there. It'll be fine. Maybe I didn't roll it out quite enough. Could it be that God is actually inviting us to a season of reshaping those same ingredients to look different? And in doing so, we may find that not only do we express the, the core heart of the church even better than what we were doing before. But we might even find that we fulfill God's mission in a way that we never have before as well. So in the season where out there, there's a lot of argument and conversation and discussion, and there's things that are distracting us, let's shift ourselves into a new place of conversation, a conversation that centers on the kingdom of God, of what the kingdom of God could look like to look at the Bible, to, to be listeners with an imagination, a prophetic Holy Spirit-led imagination, to discover what is it that God is inviting us into in this season ahead of us. just as we are waiting for the bread to prove so that we can cook those bagels here in this, this water and then chuck them back into a hot oven. We're just going to look at Acts chapter 2 in a little bit more detail and some of those surrounding things. So we'll put a little bit of a list up on the screen, but I'm looking at these different detailed components. We see 
biblical preaching. We see repentance and baptism. We see fellowship. We see the breaking of bread and eating together in one another's homes. We see communion. We see prayer. We see the gifts of the Holy Spirit at work. We see generosity. We see giving. We see care for those who are in need. We see gathering in large groups there at the temple courts. And we see gathering in small groups in homes. We see people praising God. And we see the way that people are led to Jesus and salvation. I guess I'm just asking us to consider a creative way of looking at those things. And instead of in our conversation seeking to ask the question, how do we get back as quickly as possible to the way things were? But let's have different conversations that stir Holy Spirit led, biblical based, prophetic imagination filled with hope. Let's have conversations that are asking the question, how can we be reaching out to our community further than we ever have before? Those are the ingredients of the church. And my argument is that those are the same ingredients to fulfill God's mission. And perhaps if we were to discover those ingredients in a greater way, in a different form, not only could our church become stronger and healthier and more close-knit, but we might find ourselves fulfilling God's mission in ways that we never have been able to before. Okay, so we're back. And um, the bagels have been proving in the oven. They've been rising nicely. We've got some water here that's boiling. Um, it has a little bit of salt and sugar in it, sugar to help the browning stage later on. And this is a little bit experimental for us. So we haven't done this many times before, so we'll see how it goes. Hey, Grace, what could possibly go, go wrong? Um, <laughs> so let, let's give it a go. So this is a, a new method that we are trying. Um, so try slipping that underneath there. Yep. Cool. This is a new method that we're trying. Um, keeping the paper cut into small pieces uh, on the bagel so that it's easier. You don't have to handle it as much. And then we can um, fish out the paper. If the uh, tongs worked, fish out the paper. We've got this. So we're just going to cook it um, maybe a minute each side. Yep, just push it over. Nice. Cool. Wonderful. Good job. Yeah. So what I need you to do, Grace, is watch those and then after about a minute um, we'll turn them over and then we'll we'll take them out in fact we're actually going to put them back onto this these again and then we'll put them into the hot oven and swap over and do the next lot okay so just as um as these are going and i reckon flip them over now um I, you may have heard me share about this but i'm thinking about the church in aotearoa new zealand and before the church was ever represented as a building in our nation. The church was a boat. It wasn't something in a fixed position. It was something that moved. Missionaries came from overseas in these big ships. And when the gospel was first presented, I, I remember sitting at Oihi um, up in the, the Northland there in the same setting where Samuel Marsden preached his very first message. I imagined while I was sitting there, I imagined that scene of the ships out in the water and all this big line of waka along the beach. It's a beautiful scene that we see and imagine from that first time the gospel was preached in our land. Okay, let's pull them out quickly and we'll carry on with the story in a moment. So before any church building was built, the gospel was communicated in settings that looked more like boats than buildings. 
the gospel was taken by boat to these different parts of our nation, spread around the Monaco Harbour and down the Waikato River. The, the gospel was spread by, by Māori travelling in waka before roads were built and before buildings ever came into existence in our land, in the church. And so there is something of that, I believe, heritage, heritage that we have, that church could be express, expressed through movement and changed rather than being fixed in a set position. And I wonder in, if these, in, in these changing times that we are experiencing, that perhaps more than ever before, we need to rediscover what it could look like for our nation to be church as a missional boat rather than a fixed building, for us to recognize these ingredients and find ourselves in the water of God's word and going with the flow of the Holy Spirit into new places and new settings and new ways, just as God is leading us. It's a prophetic picture for us that could encourage us and inspire us about the future rather than living in a space of fear or worry if things don't go back to the way they have been. Maybe this is an opportunity for God to inspire us again with his mission. Within our hearts, may it burn. May it stir within us. May it boil up within our being. This great mission and this calling that Jesus has on our lives as the church of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Awesome. So we've done the dishes, now we're going to check our bagels and have communion. Today, I believe that Jesus is calling us into his mission. The one who gave his life represented here by the bread and the drink now invites us to lay down our lives, to go and to make disciples of all nations, to be the church, not just in a way that comforts and encourages us, but proclaims Jesus to the world around us. Maybe it is time for us to get outside of our com comfort zones. So as we take this bread, we remember the life, death, resurrection of Jesus. And as we take this cup, we remember the forgiveness of our sins. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we say thank you. Lord, we ask that you, in this moment, would reveal yourself in a fresh new way. Lord, as bread in this form is broken and shared, may we recall and remember all that you have done. May we recognize the invitation of the church into something of your mission today. Lord Jesus, we repent of those things that hold us back from the calling that you have on our lives. Lord, we confess to you those areas of sin within ourselves, of disharmony and friction between one another, those areas of comfort and complacency that you would want to challenge, those things that hold us back, whether that be fear or doubt or insecurity. Lord, we confess these things to you, asking by your grace that you would change us, transform us, renew us again daily. And Lord, as we look forward into the future, for which we cannot see much of right now, Lord, would you renew our hope and our joy, our confidence in a kingdom that has not yet fully arrived, your kingdom, Lord Jesus, is one where you are on the throne. You are good. You are in control. So we surrender our lives afresh to you, Jesus. And we pray, we pray that our eyes and our hearts will be fixed on heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
Amen. Thank you, Grace, for joining me. Thank you for helping me with uh, the bagels today. We had fun, did we? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. And be encouraged, church.
rise above the waves My soul will rest in your embrace For I